Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Deep Vike and welcome to a new gameplay series. This time it's Patreon the city building game, the survival city building game. It's a new game that was released this year and there was a lot of hype about it. Now I get to actually play it. This is just a demo version, but still, let's see if it's worth all that money. So let's get cracking. Now, I have already played a bit, uh, I played like um, an hour and a half, maybe two hours, so I could get used to the controls and all that, so the video wouldn't be boring, you know, watching a guy trying to figure out the clunky controls. So we got this banner, we, and we have named the town Deep Town, continue, we got a lot of maps from, we can, from which we can choose, but... <clears throat> In the demo, we have only the Mediterranean. There we go, we're not gonna fiddle with these settings. And we're off. Build the town center. Choose a location for your citizens to build the town center. Okay. Right, so let's build it somewhere in the center. I think... Yeah, I think here is good. Welcome, patron. Your citizens have already built the townhouse and are ready for your guidance. Focus on getting your citizens a place to live, food to eat, and firewood to keep warm. Winter is coming, and it is up to you to prepare for it in time. Build houses, build and upgrade a gatherer's shelter to produce food, build a sawmill to produce firewood, build a depot near production buildings to make transport faster and increase maximum stock size. Right, so we got the townhouse. Is it called a townhouse? Yeah, it's called a townhouse. Right, so we're gonna take a look at the tutorial tips. Move the camera around using WSAD. There we go. Okay, what's next? Alternatively, press and hold the right mouse button to pan the camera using the mouse. There we go, like this, but I don't like that. It's a bit too sudden. Zoom the camera in and out using the mouse wheel, obviously. We already knew that. To rotate the camera, use Q and E. Okay, we already use that. To interact with objects, click on them with the left mouse button. Okay. It's pretty standard stuff too. Your citizens are in desperate need of housing. Citizens who have a place to live citizens who have a place to live in are happier and will pay taxes. Only one family can occupy a single house and if they have room and are at least content in your town, they will have children. Build five tents or houses to provide some initial housing. Right. We should also toggle the minimap. There we go. Okay, let's get rid of all those tutorials. Nothing is free. While things don't necessarily cost coins, they do require some other resource. Mark some trees for gathering. Your workers will cut them down and carry the lumber to your stockpile. When, select, when you select the gathered trees control, left click and drag the mouse to select a wide area to clear of a tree, trees. Well, that didn't sound right at all. When you select the gathered trees control, okay, left click and drag the mouse to select a wide area to clear of trees. Right. That's better. So let's get to clearing some trees, right? Let's clear this side. We're going to build the houses right here. Making efficient production chain rests on having valuable data. One key element in this are the grid overlays. Cycle through the overlays by clicking on the grid button in the top right HUD menu, G. This will display useful info on soil, fertility, ore richness and buildable land. Right, so you get to cycle through this through these grids. So the first one is the build grid, which is really useful. Uh, well, obviously all of them are useful, but th I think the building grid will be used the most. So the first one is build grid. The second one is soil fertility grid, which I presume is for farms and stuff. And then you have an ore grid. And obviously the zones close to the mountains are the more fertile or whatever. Right. Among the basic needs of your citizens, food is your number one priority. Build a gatherer's shelter. Okay. What next? Okay, let's build the houses. 
Also, they um, they tell us about the grid, but they don't tell us about T. Which, you know, like... It makes the trees invisible, so you can actually see what you're building. So you kind of like remove the clutter. So let's get building our houses. Let's build one here and one here, and then we're gonna rotate them and build one here and one here and the fifth one on this side now let's build the roads there we go we're gonna make this road a bit wider okay there we go now we're gonna build a road around our townhouse Next up, let's see, uh, they said something about production. Gather, gatherers shelter. Gathers various wild fruit, mushrooms, and other products. Well-forested areas are more abundant in these resources. Okay, so we gotta build this building next to a lot of trees that we won't cut down. So I think it's gonna be somewhere around here. Right, let's build a gatherers shelter, shall we? Actually, first let's build the road so it's perfectly aligned and neat. And now let's build gatherer's shelter right here. Then a hunting lodge right next to it. A forester's hut, why not? So we can plant trees so we won't run out of trees. Plants and cuts down trees to produce lumber. Efficiency depends on two factors. How forested is the area and how fertile is the soil? Well, I didn't check. Before you place a building, you have... They show you... The game shows you, like, the fertility or the efficiency of the building. So, I don't think these buildings are efficient. I should have checked that before I put it. So, we're actually gonna clear the buildings do we get our resources back if we clear these buildings um i don't know did we doesn't look like it okay so forester's hut how can we make it to 90 plus efficiency Okay, which one is this? This is the forester's hut. Okay, so we don't need to place that one again. We got the gatherer's shelter. Yeah, let's put the gatherer's shelter somewhere around here. So we have 101 work efficiency. That's lovely. There we go. And next to it, we should build the hunting lodge. Produces venison and leather. Well forested areas and wild animal lair boosts efficiency. There we go. No, so actually, the efficiency wasn't that bad. Wow, this weather is actually annoying. You can't really see much. There we go. We got a hunting lodge right there. And... Yeah, we're gonna keep the forester's hut there. Why not? Right. Back to normal view. And let's build this road to these buildings. It doesn't look very nice, but I do hope... Can a house fit in there? That's perfect. If a house can fit, we'll build three houses and we'll make it look like we wanted to do that. Okay, what's next? Let's check uh, production buildings. Let's see what else we have. We have a sawmill, produces firewood. Of course, we need the firewood for... Winter. What else? A herbalist's hut. Do we have a herbalist's hut? Gatherer shelter hunting lodge. Yeah, let's build a herbalist's hut. Why not? With 93 efficiency. And... I think I should build it here somewhere. Yeah, this is much better. Is it because of soil fertility? Hmm. 
That doesn't seem like it. There we go. Okay, we can speed up the game. The game can be sped up uh, clicking on these buttons. So we got uh, the normal speed, two times the normal speed, five times and ten times. You can also do that by pressing one, two, three and four. Okay. <clears throat> Let's wait on the buildings to complete. Most buildings require workers to operate. In this case, the gatherer's shelter requires gatherers to actually go out and collect various fruit and mushrooms. To do this, you should assign workers to the profession. Assign two workers to the gatherer profession. Either select the building or open the jobs panel, J. So let's open the jobs panel. And this is the jobs board. Overly long transport routes can cause serious problems. Build a depot to create a new drop-off and pick-up point as well as to expand your stockpile maximum size. Okay, so... Right. Patron is all about production chains, which means transporting resources between various buildings is essential. To make it easier for your workers and carriers to do this, place some roads and connect your buildings. It is not required, but it will make them go faster. Okay, so that's kind of like a no-brainer. Building roads, no problem. Winter is coming and your invaluable citizens will want to keep warm. They do this by burning firewood or coal. For starters, let's ensure they have a decent supply of firewood. Build a sawmill to create firewood from lumber. Make sure you have enough lumber and don't forget to assign a sawyer. Mm -hmm. Tom Sawyer, much. Berries and mushrooms aren't enough to keep your citizens fed. Happy and healthy, they need more variety. Build a hunting lodge and assign a worker to the hunter profession. Okay, we already built that. Bear in mind that hunters and uh, hunters use lumber and iron to create traps and arrows. They can't hunt properly without those. You can gather iron, much like lumber, directly in the world. It looks like we got a lot of tips. When you take care of the basic necessities, you'll want to expand, grow and advance. Take a look at the various research projects you can undertake. So by pressing U, you will um, bring up the research tab or whatever it's called, research board. Research costs resources and takes time, but it is well worth it. Okay, so are we done with the tutorials? No. If your town is running smoothly, you can afford to speed up time somewhat. Use the time controls to speed up, slow down, or even pause the passage of time. You can also use the shortcuts to set speed instantly. One, two, three, four. Yeah, like I said before. You now have the basics of governing your quaint little community. Take care of your citizens and your town will prosper. Ignore their pleas and you can expect trouble. Good luck, patron. Right. Okay, I didn't like that last warning. Okay, so let's assign the workers. This is the jobs board where you get to see the total number of workers. Worker means general worker. There's all sorts of jobs like carrying resources around and constructing buildings. It is important to have general workers in your workforce. Otherwise, your production might come to a halt. Right, so right now we need herbalists. We need hunters, foresters, gatherers, sawyers, and carriers. And it looks like we have assigned workers to every building. What's the problem here? No herbalist in the building. Now yeah, he'll come up, don't worry about it. Let's build a road for this building. And there we go. Okay. Right, so let's cut down some more trees. We're going to cut down these trees and these trees right here. And yeah, I think that's enough for now. Next thing we want to do is <clears throat> build a dock. Town buildings, docks. Enables trading with the mainland. I think that's, um, that's a way to make money with the docks. Because the only way so far I know you can make money is through the income that each family pays. Each house has a set income. So it's uh, looks like for 
each of these houses is 170 coins per year maybe if their residence no so it looks like it doesn't matter if you have uh, four residents three or five or six the income is the same so it's basically 170 per house right back to building the docks there we go we have built the docks building the road to the docks and that's it okay so we've run out of money all we can do now is wait so we can afford to buy new stuff also let's press u and take a look at the research tab so we can research a quarry allows the construction of quarries used for extracting stone we can research fisherman's hut allows the construction of the fisherman's huts the best source of fresh fish and crab and we also have cleared path which looks like an upgrade Increase herbalist's hut efficiency if near a gatherer's shelters, plus 20%. Okay. Another thing I like about this game is that every building has possible upgrades. For example, let's take this herbalist's hut. It has expansion, which means you can upgrade the worker slot to plus one. So you can have two herbalists instead of one. Then you have herbalism training herb production plus 15 percent let's take a look at the hunting lodge you have expansion so i'm guessing every uh, building that uh, has workers can be upgraded to you know house more workers in the hunting lodge you have the trapper training production during winter plus 15 percent expert skinning leather production plus 10 percent and expert butcher venison production plus 10 percent also most of these upgrades are labeled here number one so i'm i guess we have expansion number two expansion number three and so on and so forth i don't know up until what level you can do that but i guess we'll see gatherers shelters it has expansion one and large baskets one production plus 25 percent forester's hut expansion yeah so basically besides the worker slots plus one upgrades you have production upgrades and some of them have unique upgrades like tree growth speed the sawmill has production plus 20 percent and upkeep minus 15 percent so this uh, seems like it's unique to this building right so let's check the docks okay nobody's doing anything at the docks we should speed up the game a bit i think they will cut down the trees and then move on to the docks so we're gonna wait on that we should also start a research now let, let's research quarry because we will need the mine upgrade so we can get iron was it for the hunters hunting lodge yeah hunting lodge needs iron speeding up the game a bit no i like this game it makes um the art style makes the village look so cozy and also the little smoke coming out of the chimney right there it's lovely makes you feel like you're part of a community okay so queries done research next up should be mine allows the construction of coal and iron mines we should also build some depots there we go depot costs 30 coins We're not gonna build one just yet. I think we're gonna upgrade the mine first. There we go. <clears throat> okay, come on guys, get to the docks. Start building the docks, thank you. Why aren't you building the docks? Oh yeah, they still have to cut down these trees first. 
Okay, okay, yeah. So they take the resources to the townhouse first. Okay, so this building looks like it has a problem. Resources required in production are not arriving to this building. Missing required resources. Carriers, workers are not bringing enough resources to this production building. And I think it's because I have them cut down a lot of trees. And also they have to build the docks. There we go, we have the docks. And we should also assign... Can we assign a dock worker? There we go. Okay, so how do you trade? Trade panel, okay. We can trade firewood. We can also trade herbs. Buy, sell. Increase amount to sell. Okay, so we can sell some herbs and make some coin. And we should also sell some firewood because we will upgrade production so we can have enough firewood for ourselves and for export what else what else can we sell iron seems to have oh no that's the quantity the price the price is one so this is like one coin or we could also sell some lumber why not sure let's, let's sell like 10 of each but we're only gonna sell stuff that we can produce so no selling of iron yet Although, we can build the iron mine. Okay, let's uh, bring up the ore grid. And check out the efficiency. Right, so it looks like this is the best spot to build these guys. And we're gonna build them right here. There we go. Get the trees out of the way. Build the roads to connect... The iron mine to the main city. There we have it. Lovely. And I think this is where we should build a depot when we will have the money for it. Okay. So we're gonna wait on that. And I think, I think we should build a depot next to the docks. Okay, looks like we don't have a lot of workers. And I don't know how you get new people to come into your town. Maybe, oh, I think... Yeah, so this and this panel right here, you get to check all the resources and you also have an overview of the population. So population is composed of adults, young, children, and then you get to see how many families you have. So I guess when when the children grow up, they become young and when young grow up, they become adults and adults are your workforce, basically. This panel also tells you the total number of houses, how many are empty and how many are occupied, and also how many of each citizen class you have. Looks like we got four classes, peasants, laborers, merchants, and gentry. Right. Okay, so let's upgrade. Yeah, we should upgrade the hunting lodge because food production is lower than food consumption. Okay, hunting lodge, expert butcher, there we go. And then we're gonna upgrade the gatherer's shelter. Large baskets, one. But we need coin for that. So we're gonna wait. I think also we should sell a bit more lumber because it seems to be piling up. Oh, I should have clicked trade, so nothing registered. When you pick what to buy and sell, you have to click on trade apparently. Is it instant or does a ship come in? I'm, I'm assuming a ship will come in and trade if it's instant. Uh, I wouldn't like that. 
Okay, let's also sell some firewood, like I was saying. Can we sell firewood? No, actually, let's not. Let's uh, play it safe. Yeah, there we go. Trade. Okay. So, you're waiting for a trade ship. When this fills up, the trade ship comes, I guess, I presume, and get all the money that you selected for the products that you selected. Okay, let's see what else we can do around here. Right, I was talking about uh, building a depot. Let's build it here, close to the mine. There we go. And let's also... Okay, so you can increase the maximum number of citizens working in this building. This will also increase the maximum number of citizens assigned to the profession. Okay. So you can set that to 2 and... You, you can set the number of workers through this panel. You don't have to necessarily open the job panel, it seems. So we're gonna set one miner. And it looks like we don't have enough workers. So what you have to do, it seems, you have to kind of like juggle workers around. Like check and see what you need. So for example, I don't need a lot of lumber right now. So I can... Like, turn the forester into a worker again. And then we have two workers now. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, what else is there to do? We got iron. I think we should build... A stone mine or what what is it called coal mine quarry yeah, a quarry do we need a quarry do we want stone royal intervention okay the poor state of your treasury has reached the king's ears oh my we're not good with money it seems he's offered to help us this time hint be careful what you spend your coins on especially in the beginning investing in building upgrades is a good idea welcome we welcome the royal assistance. Coins 250. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's start upgrading these things again. Large baskets, herbalism training, expert butcher. Yeah, we're gonna need an upgrade on the sawmill for that firewood. <clears throat> Are these guys producing anything? Okay, 150 iron each year that's great we got 188 firewood food production isn't great I wonder if you when you upgrade one of these production buildings does it instantly reflect here for example, herbalism training, herbs production. Well, well, not this is not a good example, but let's take the hunting lodge. So, if you upgrade expert butcher, venison production plus twenty five percent. Will it instantly reflect here on the monthly produced? I guess we'll have to see. Resources required in production are not arriving to this building. Okay, so what is this guy doing? Oh, he's just a part of the building. He's not a real worker. Okay, can we click on... No, we can't click on the citizens. It would have been nice to have like a... An info board. What are they doing? Where are they going? What are they carrying? What type of worker are they? Also, it looks like this road is kind of useless. Nobody's using it. Monthly produced. Actually, it got lower. How does that work? Okay, so let's check some more upgrades. Construction goods. 
So it's September already and we're not go doing great with food. So we got to fix that ASAP. Although we're doing the best we can. Did the ship arrive yet? No, the ship didn't arrive. Right, so... The town is beginning to take shape. It's looking quite good, actually. Not bad, not bad. I like uh, the organized roads. And the little housing block right here. Right, so this was the first episode. It's, it's a fun game. I have only one problem with this game. The problem is that it doesn't have any clear objectives. But it being a survival game, and from what I heard, it's pretty brutal. I think the challenge is the objective. I think it's quite challenging. Now it's pretty easy because we don't have a lot to oversee and manage, but I, I'm thinking that when you will have a big city, maybe when you have all four classes of citizens, that's uh, that's when it's gonna be hard and I think that's what will drive you the, the challenge is the objective here right so thanks for watching guys don't forget to like and subscribe this video if you enjoyed it my name is deep Vike, and I'll see you next time